Amanda Carney. Uh, I'm 50 years old, as I just had that major milestone. Uh, I came in from Kirkland, Washington. Um, my interview partner is Nathan, and we are participating as fellow citizens in the One Small Step Project. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Nathan Shelby. I am 38. I came all the way from Everett. The name of my interview partner is Amanda. Nathan, you said, I would classify myself as socially liberal and fiscally conservative, a father to a wonderful little girl and husband to an amazing woman, celebrating 10 years this May. Family is extremely important to me. I am an avid shooter and enjoy many firearms related sports along with taking our boat with friends and family to our many local waterways. I am currently serving my second term on my city's animal shelter board and have served on other commissions, active in my daughter's school PTA. Amanda, you said, I am a sister, wife, mother, employee, and small business owner. I was born in the Midwest, raised in, in the Mid-Atlantic, and reside in the Pacific Northwest. I find religion fascinating from a cultural, historical perspective, but am non-practicing. I believe that nature and quote-unquote God are synonymous. I am a passionate supporter of equal rights, a woman's freedom to choose, and rational gun control policy. I don't have much tolerance for people who won't work together for the greatest benefit to all. So how would you describe your personal political values? Yeah, uh, I think also uh, kind of hard to answer. Um, I would say, I think very much in the bio, um, I said socially liberal and, and fiscally conservative. I agree that part of the agreement of having government is is giving up some of your, you know, your liberty, your individuality for that collective good. Uh, and I think we've maybe swung that pendulum sometimes a little bit too far, but that is what it is. Um, I am generally fine with everybody doing whatever they'd like to do, uh, fine with a modicum of uh, taxes in order to pay for those things. Um, I have a harder time supporting government legislating morality in, in all aspects. You know, to the left, to the right, it doesn't matter to me. Like, stop. <laughs> give me, I'm curious, give me an example of where you think that... Um legislation is getting into morality in a way that you think is uncomfortable uh so i think i think one example in this state is maybe um in certain cases dcfs has the ability to support uh, a child uh in their transition treatment potentially without the consent of the adult uh that's responsible for them and i think it, it bothers me that the government thinks it's okay to remove the parents in some aspect. I understand wanting to support that portion of uh, an individual's right uh, to, you know, live their authentic self. My six-year-old can tell me one thing and one thing, you know, and like, I, I don't understand that. And I have heard anecdotally, you know, my nieces and nephews are in their early teens and that the, you know, I don't know if it's just the zeitgeist of the moment or similar, but you know, their their children at those uh, at their schools are trying to figure out like which way they want to present. And I don't know if that's, you know, just you know we're we're getting folks that are kind of authentically doing that, or folks that are kind of like, oh, this is the neat thing to do, and I really don't want the neat thing to do folks to you know detract from the people who need authentically that support, right? Yeah. Like. Hey, if if this is you and this is for sure you, you go do you, and we will give you all the support that we can, you know, get there. But I think we're putting our thumbs on the scale, maybe one way or the other. Yeah, I think, I think it's really hard it is, to do. It, I I think where we so, did yeah, that answer it? I mean, it, like that, it like so does. Yes, yeah, thank you. It, and it it's so tough because I am seeing this challenge that you're describing even in my work environment every day, which is good intentions. People have good intentions about wanting to help Nathan or wanting to help Amanda. <clears throat> and they come up with a plan that might help Nathan or Amanda. And then they just say, well, we'll just make this apply across everybody in that same set of circumstances. And yep. they, and they miss all the nuance. Yes. Right. And 
the I'll, I'll give you a, a non-political example, return to office, mm-hmm. right, for people who have been working virtually for three years. Most companies, they have one policy, no exceptions. Is that really rational? I don't think so, um, because, you know, the devil's in the details, yeah. and, and there are circumstances and, and a need for finesse in most situations. And in the example that you described, I think probably well-intentioned. I'd like to assume the best intention when people are bringing things up for legislation. Mm -hmm. But whoops, didn't think about what the downstream impact of that might be to other affected parties. And it usually takes some sort of, you know, really awful edge case to go correct it. And like, could we just avoid the awful edge case? Yeah. Like that would be better. And I think that gets back to what we were saying about smaller <laughs> government, right? Like, yes. instead of erring on the side of legislating everything, let's not legislate everything. Let's try to m- maybe make that, I don't know, it's like surgery should be your last resort. And I have so many days where I don't feel hopeful about where things are going. And I was really hoping that this would be one of those moments where I just feel hopeful. I really like the quote that, you know, the arc of the universe kind of bends towards justice. I think we'll get there. Sometimes slightly slower, I think, than some people want to bend it really quickly, but, you know, it drags society along with you. It's going to take some of us a little while.